Okay, again, good afternoon, dear freshies, and again, welcome to our uh, second session. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to cut this video into like 10 or 11 minutes, okay? For you, number one, for you not to be bored by, you know, listening to my monotonous uh, speech here. Okay, and then number two, uh, for ease in uploading, of course, if you, if you uh, consume too much or too many, too many minutes, then uh, the file is too large or too, too large for it to be uploaded, okay, in the YouTube. Anyway, so in this second session, we'll discuss about the accounting cycle. Let's go back to, you know, the, the cycle that uh, produces the uh, financial statements of every and any entity, okay? So accounting cycle, again, as I mentioned earlier, this is the step-by-step -step process done by the accountant for him to be able to produce the financial statements, okay? Now, what are the different steps in, this, in, the, in uh, what we call the accounting cycle? Number one, of course, is the analysis. Okay, number one, of course, is the analysis of business transactions. Now, what are the things that we do and why do we do this analysis of business transaction? Okay, now imagine, say for example, you have your own business or you, you have your family business and then your mom would ask you to, you know, uh, can, can, can you pick up the receipts, okay, from the car and then you charge it to uh, our business. Is that possible for, you know, for... Uh, family businesses, yes, that is very much possible. Okay, so what are we going to do in the analysis of business transactions? Okay, we are going to analyze number one is that a transaction for the business or is it, you know, uh, personal to the owners? What are we going to use in, in judging whether it's for the business or for the or personal to the owners? Remember the entity concept? Okay, using the entity concept, we have to think to distinguish whether the transaction is what? Okay, business, is it a business transaction? Or is it the transaction of the business or owners? Because remember, in the entity concept, there's a what? A distinction, a separation of the owner and the business. So when the owner invests his money in the business, then that becomes the property of the business. And so therefore in accounting, not all transactions would go into the books of accounts of the company because we have to take into account if those transactions are business related or not, okay? So first and foremost, we have to analyze whether that piece of document like an OR or an invoice, is it for the business or the for personal use of the owners of the business now after saying yes it is the business what are we going to do we are now going to analyze again analyze what analyze the effect okay we are going to analyze the effect of the transactions effect in terms of what now you still remember the accounting equation What's the accounting equation again? Assets is equal to liabilities plus owner's equity. Okay. We know from this uh, from this equation, okay, accounting equation, that assets are provided by either the creditors or the owners of the company. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to analyze after saying yes, this is this is a uh, transaction related to the business operations. The next is, which of these accounts are affected? Did it increase the assets? How about the liabilities? How about the owner's equity? So we are going to analyze the transactions in terms of the effects on these elements, okay? Not only that, you know for a fact that you have your revenues and expenses as well as your extension of the equity okay so the second step is for you to analyze what is the possible effect of this transaction in the company's assets liabilities equities revenues and expenses say for example the company uh, purchase office supplies for cash so what is the effect let us try to analyze there's an increase in office supplies which is an asset 
So there's an increase in asset. But since it was also paid, then what did the company use to pay for it? Another asset, and that is cash. So there's an increase in cash and a decrease also in asset. Sorry, there's an increase in uh, supplies, asset, and there is also a decrease in an asset account, which is cash. So that's how we analyze the transactions, okay? Now, again, this is after determining that the transaction is business related and not, and not personal to the owner, okay? Now, the third one, this is where we are now ready to record or journalize. So journalizing or recording, okay? Journalizing or recording transaction. So here, after you have analyzed the effect on the assets, liabilities, equity, revenues, and expenses, you are now ready to record the transactions in what we call, ano tawag doon? General Journal. Okay? Now, General Journal, this is actually the books of original entry because this is the first record that we are using in accounting. So whenever this transaction, we record it in what we call general journal. But of course, accounting is an art. So therefore, we have uh, formulated different or designed different journals in order to cater to uh, specific transactions. Okay? Okay, I think as a general journal, we could be using what? We also have what we call the special journal. Okay, can you still recall where did you uh, use the special journals? When did they use the special journals? You are correct. You use this in the merchandising business. In accounting for merchandising business. Okay? okay we have these special journals. Okay? And what are those special journals? You have the... Okay, you have the... Okay, uh, revenue journal or sales journal. Revenue or sales journal. What else? You have your, what else? Okay, cash receipts, journal. What else? You have your cash disbursements journal. And of course, you have your, what? Purchases journal, that's correct. Okay, you have your purchases journal. Okay, so we have different journals. So um, if you could recall your merchandising accounting, okay, if the, if, if the transaction is about sale or revenue on account, then you will record that in your revenue or sales journal. If it's collection, then you record that under your cash receipts journal because the basis or the document for this uh, cash receipts journal is what we call the official receipts. Now, if that involves disbursement or paying someone else or uh, your, your creditor, government, then you put that under cash disbursements journal. Okay, because here you are monitoring the disbursement through what we call check vouchers. Okay, and if that, if, if the transaction is what? Uh, purchases on account, meaning you purchase but you haven't paid for it yet, then you record that in the purchases journal. Now, does it mean that if you have these special journals, you don't need general journal anymore? Okay, that is correct. So even if you have all of these special journals, you still have to make use of the general journal. Why? Because there are transactions that are not part of this one or cannot be recorded in any of these special journals. Say, for example, um, adjusting entries. I know that some of you like adjusting entries, no? Some of you probably don't like it because it involves a lot of analysis and interpretation. So, you know, journal, uh, adjusting journal entries cannot be recorded in the revenue or sales journal. Receipts journal, no. Disbursements journal, no. Purchase journal, no. That's why you still need your general journal. Because there are transactions that cannot be recorded in any of these special journals. Okay, so when you speak of journalizing, we are recognizing the transaction for the first time in the books of accounts of the company. And when you say books of accounts, we have all of these different types of books of accounts, okay? It depends on the nature of the transaction, okay? So 
Again, we'll, we'll cut the discussion here and then I'll return in a few minutes, okay? We are in journalizing, okay? Thank you very much for watching. Bye!